Hey guys, wow, it's been a while since I last made my top 10 anticipated games list. 2011, what? So let's not waste any more time. Here are my top 10 most anticipated games of 2015. Number 10. Finally, a new Nintendo IP. So, Codename Steam was announced at the last E3 during a special event. And while the developer would like to think that it's a very unique strategy game, it's Valkyria Chronicles. It's clearly Valkyria Chronicles. Yes, there are some differences. For instance, in Valkyria Chronicles, characters would counterattack on their own, where in Codename Steam, you have to save some of your steam for our characters to pull off a successful counterattack when enemies approach them. This is actually rather low on the list because I'm anticipating it, but at the same time, it hasn't really hooked me as much as it should. I love Valkyria Chronicles. I played the first one, I played most of the second one, the story was kind of lame in the second one, but for the most part, it was still a really fun game. So I'm really looking forward to Nintendo's take on Valkyria Chronicles. Also, the story is weird. Number nine, Majora's Mask 3D. Surprisingly, the only remake on this entire list, for once. I bought Ocarina of Time 3D when it came out, and it was fantastic. I love the graphical improvements, and they fixed the water temple. Well, I never really thought it was that bad, but it was nice being able to switch on the iron boots whenever I wanted it by tapping the touchscreen. But they didn't just change the graphics in Majora's Mask, they added fishing! Okay, they did more than just add fishing. They've improved the bomber's notebook so you can keep track of events going on in Majora's Mask easier. And my gosh, there were a lot of events in Majora's Mask. If you were to just tell someone the Zelda game has four dungeons, they would call you crazy for saying this is one of the best Zelda games. But it's not all about the dungeons. It's fun just interacting with the characters and figuring out how to help them in their lives. This adds hours and hours to the gameplay, and most players will want to experience all the different side quests this game has to offer. It's a fantastic Zelda game, and I haven't even mentioned all the mass transformations. Who didn't love rolling around the field as a Goron, swimming under the sea as a Zora, and... Doing that as a Deku Shrub. Of course, Fierce Deity returns too. Too bad you can only use it against boss battles. I hope they change that. Anyway, Majora's Mask 3D. Should be fun. Number 8. Pirate Warriors 3. Why does every Pirate Warriors game have to make it into my top 10 anticipated game list? The first one was actually not that good. The second one was a huge improvement though. Adding lots more characters and stuff to do. Plus they fixed the coin system, which is pretty bad in the original. I'm still playing Pirate Warriors 2 to this day. I haven't unlocked everything yet. I don't even have all the characters. But enough about that. Pirate Warriors 3 looks to be a fun little game for One Piece fans. I mean, they're going back to the original arcs and they're actually adding some boss fights that I was really annoyed they didn't have in the original. Like Captain Kuro from the Black Cat Pirates. Come on, he was one of the coolest characters in the East Blue plot arc. Also, they're adding Axe Hand Morgan, which is a character I didn't think they'd have. It really feels like what Pirate Warriors 1 should have been. It's nice that they're returning to doing their regular plot arcs instead of making up their own story. Also, Sabo's in it, so shut up and take my money. Number 7, Rhodia Sky Soldier. Okay, this one's a long shot. For one, it hasn't even been announced for the United States yet. We don't have a release date or anything. However, I covered Rhodia Sky Soldier in a previous anticipated list, and now that it's actually being released in Japan, I figured I should bring it up again. Rhodia Sky Soldier is being made by Yuji Naka, the creator of Sonic the Hedgehog, and to me, it looks like it could be a great spiritual successor to Nights into Dreams. You fly around and attack stuff, but you're actually in a full 3D environment. You're not stuck on a weird 2.5D plane like you were in Nights into Dreams. There's even some slick-looking cinematics that remind me of the modern Ape Escape games. Rodeus Sky Soldier. I may not know that much about you, but please come out in the States. That's what this article says is going to happen. Number 6. Shantae, Half Genie Hero. So this game was up on Kickstarter for a while, and thankfully it met a lot of goals before and after the Kickstarter ended. It's going to be released on everything, well, except for the 3DS, but their goal was to make an HD Shantae game, and 3DS doesn't really count as an HD system, but it is on... PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Xbox 360, Wii U, PC. It's on just about everything that you can play in HD. I'm a big fan of the Shantae series. I own both the original Shantae on the virtual console. I'm not paying 700 bucks on eBay to get it, thank you very much. 
and Risky's Revenge on the inferior iPhone version. Hey, at least there's a sexy costume. I do want to get Pirates Cursed at some point, but we'll wait and see. It's going to be great to see how the story of Shantae began. Don't you just love prequels? Except for Star Wars. Number 5. Mighty Number 9. Wow, that's funny. Number 9 is at number 5. Well, if it were at number 9, it wouldn't be as anticipated now, would it? This is the second Kickstarter project that's ended up on this list so far. I'm beginning to sense a theme. If you're not a gamer, or you are a gamer and have had your head stuck in a cave for a year or so, let me just say that Mighty Number no. 9 is actually a project created by Keji Inafune, the original creator of Mega Man. And wow, it's shaping up to be a pretty nice little project. The graphical style isn't all we could have hoped for, but the game still looks fantastic. And it looks really fun to play. After Capcom pretty much put the final nail into Mega Man's coffin, we really need a project like this to keep the Blue Bomber alive, even if it is just a spiritual successor. Not to mention the Kickstarter for this game got funded so well, it crashed through just about every stretch goal. I mean, we've got voice acting, and it's on just about every system, and there's a multiplayer mode. I'm pretty confident in saying that if you buy this game, you're going to get your money's worth. I'm definitely going to try and get it day one. Thanks, Mighty Number no. 9. Now, Capcom, give us Mega Man back! Number 4. Splatoon. Oh yes, another new IP from Nintendo, but this one I'm actually anticipating a lot. When I saw it at E3, at first I was like, what? But now that I've seen more gameplay of it, it looks like a lot of fun. I especially like the design of the Inkling Girl. Not the boy so much. Looks like I'm going to be playing as a chick when I play that game. The multiplayer mode alone looked fantastic, but then they showed off the single player, and well, it looks like a messier version of Mario Sunshine. Okay, not really, but it does make me think of Mario Sunshine a little. They also showed off a hub world where you can customize your Inkling. That should be a lot of fun. Splatoon was made by a young team of Nintendo developers, and I hope this means we're gonna get a whole bunch of new IPs in the future. This is really promising stuff. Plus, the Wii U needs more online games. Number three! Oh gosh, this one. Okay, this one wouldn't even be on the list if it weren't for the fact that Nintendo had to go and say it'd be released in 2015. But here I am with very little footage of this game. Number three is Star Fox for the Wii U. It's mostly just here because I've been waiting for a new Star Fox game since Command? Seriously? What the heck? I am a little bit leery on what is up with the weird seeing your cockpit on the controller and looking at this TV screen at the same time, but I'll give it a chance. I mean, it's made by Miyamoto for crying out loud. I can't wait to see the whole Star Fox team back in action. It's got to be a lot less depressing than most of the endings of Command, that's for sure. Number two. Oh, yeah. We're getting into the nitty gritty of it now. A Legend of Zelda for the Wii U. Looks phenomenal. Oh my gosh, it really is the Legend of Zelda Scrolls. Who'd have thought they would make a Zelda game where you can just go anywhere you see? They really wanted to recapture what it was like on the original NES where you just had this one big massive world where you weren't locked off like you were in Ocarina of Time. Oh, you better get the note from Zelda and to get to pass the gate. Now there might be stuff like that, but the world is going to be so big and so much fun to explore. And look at these graphics. I don't care if it's a Wii U or not, that looks great. The Legend of Zelda never fails to impress, unless it's the Water Temple or that stupid repeatable dungeon in Phantom Hourglass. Screw that place! n n n n number one This is the reason I made this list. This game is the reason you're watching this video. Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. Gosh, I love Monster Hunter so much. Monster Hunter Tri made a previous list, and while that game was fun, it was 3 Ultimate that really improved everything. And 4 Ultimate looks even better. I've tried out the demo with the Charge Blade, and my gosh is that weapon fun. I really needed a weapon like that because I don't use weapons that can block very often. I mean, the great sword, but I don't really like it that much. Another great thing about it is it's the 3DS version, but it's online! Why couldn't they have done that for the 3DS version of 3 Ultimate? I guess because they knew the Wii U version wasn't going to sell that great at the time. I'm also really looking forward to customizing my felines. Have you seen some of these costumes? Dante from Devil May Cry? Yes, please! In fact, I'm so excited for this game, I already pre-ordered the new 3DS XL Monster Hunter bundle. 
I actually did it the day they announced it. Good luck pre-ordering it now, they're all sold out. Join me around February 13th, and we'll hunt some monsters together. Hey, thanks for watching my video, I had a lot of fun making it. Those games look pretty great, huh? Hey, if you like video games, check out this Let's Play channel me and my friend have. It's called The Strategy Guides. We dig deep into the game and get all the secrets for you. Right now, we're playing Piano 3 and writing out of stories. And if you really enjoyed this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. If you want to watch another video, maybe you can watch my RAM series. I've been working on this for years. Lots of Ape Escape stuff. Check it out, and I'll see you next time.